Hey folks, me and Riley are back out in the woods today looking at trees. I wanted to take a close up look of one of my favorite trees, the black gum. Also known as Tupelo gum, Tupelo, sometimes called sour gum. These trees are an important tree for our honeybees, not only for nectar and pollen, but also potential home sites for the bees. These trees can live hundreds of years old, and as they get older, they will uh, sometimes uh, deteriorate on the inside. There will be uh, cavities that, uh, that make great nesting sites for various bird species as well as honeybees. And so let's take a close look at this tree, folks. All right, as you can see on these leaves, I've, I've, I've picked one here that's grown on the edge of an opening. So we'll have the opportunity to see some of the, some of the leaves up close on an older tree. Uh, but the leaves are generally three to five inches long. They're, they have uh, quite a bit of variability in the shape. They're a lot of times called obovate, where they're a little bit wider at the end. And a lot of times they'll have this little, little pointed tip. Uh, they're, they're, they're known to have pinnate venation, which basically means the veins look sort of like a feather. Uh, they have an alternate leaf arrangement on the stem. And sometimes, depending on where these are growing, sometimes the leaves can be quite a bit larger and, and therefore can be mistaken for sourwood. But when you take other characteristics into consideration, like for instance the, the bark, which on an older tree kind of looks like alligator hide. But one of the main things that you can see in this tree is how a lot of the branches come off at a 90 degree angle. And this gives it a really interesting winter form. And landscapers say this tree has all season interest. Uh, particularly in fall, the, the fall colors are spectacular. It actually rivals red maple in that regard. It's, uh, it's, it's not, it doesn't make very good firewood due to the fact that it has an interlocking grain pattern. It makes it really hard to split. But the pallet industry uh, likes to use this wood because of its durability. It, it also makes good wood for carving. It was used historically for um, handles and for gun stocks. The leaves have been said to be crowded. You can see they kind of have this sort of a, a whirl look to them, or like a little bunch of leaves on the end, end of the, of the twigs there. But uh, if y'all hang around, we're going to talk more about this tree and, uh, and, and, and take a look at some, some pictures, how, these, how some of these logs were used historically for, for beehives. Fascinating old tree. Uh, the, uh, the, it is a dioecious tree, meaning that uh, some, some trees are male and some are female. Uh, not really. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this one to see which one it is as it blooms. And then later in the fall, the fruit is a, uh, a bluish purple droop that kind of reminds you of, a, of an elongated blueberry, sort of. Uh, uh, not, not very palatable. The, they are edible, but not palatable to humans. They have very little flesh on the seed. Now, birds love them, they'll eat them, and then, uh, and then the seeds pass through their digestive tract and, uh, and lay dormant until spring. But uh, thanks for tagging along, folks. We're going we're gonna to back up here a little bit and, and take a look at this tree from a distance, and you'll also be able to see a characteristic growth habit. Yeah. Riley and I are definitely in rattlesnake country here. Watch your step. All right. Now, if we back away from, from this old black gum, you can you can see it has a interesting growth form. growing here amongst uh, some red oaks, red maples, black willow, it's like some post oaks, sassafras, and some sourwood and uh, various, various pine tree species. All right, hang around folks. We're going to take a closer look at some pictures and uh, talk a little bit more about the amazing black gum tree. 
Okay, folks, we're back in the studio now. We're going to take a closer look at the black gum tree. Nissa sylvatica. Black gum has several common names. Tupelo, the farther down south you go, more, more people know it as that. Also known as Tupelo gum, black Tupelo, sour gum, and uh, one that you rarely hear is pepperidge. Older trees have a distinctive look. Some people describe it as uh, having an appearance of alligator hide. This can vary though in some, in uh, some locations. They generally will get between 60 to 80 feet tall. They have a kind of a relatively straight growth habit. The foliage can be quite dense as we uh, talked about out in the field there. Uh, the, the leaves can some times be described as crowded. As you can see here in this particular picture, uh, this tree had the opportunity to grow in an open setting and it takes on more of a pyramidal or a conical shape. These trees can live to be hundreds of years old. Uh, this particular picture here is of uh, Dr. David Frank who's doing a core in a, uh, a black gum tree up in New York and this tree turned out to be a little over 500 years old. Uh, it's not uncommon for them to live between 450 to 550 years old. The, the oldest known on record is 679 years old and that's that tree is uh was at least in 2000 was still alive in new hampshire they uh will bloom sometime between april and june depending on your elevation latitude and the seasonal variations you, we have a couple of pictures here one the top picture is of a, a female flower and the bottom picture is male flowers these trees are dioecious meaning you'll have a, a either male or a female tree. Black gum tree is an excellent nectar source. As you can see in this picture here, there's some uh, uh, beautiful jars of honey that were actually from black gum too below. The leaves have a glossy or a waxy appearance. As we talked about out in the field, they have a pinnate venation. Uh, they have, uh, they can be uh, quite, quite a bit of variability in the shape. They're typically described as obovate, meaning they're a little bit wider at the top. And you can see that little tip coming out. That's, that's kind of characteristic. These leaves will, will be in bunches on the end of the, on the end of the, uh, the stems generally. The fruit is a, uh, is, is known as a droop. It kind of looks like an elongated blueberry, uh, not a whole lot of fruit. It's very little flesh, uh, really bitter, not very palatable to humans. They're not poisonous or anything. They're just not, not very tasty. Now, birds love them and, uh, and will eat these and, uh, and, and pass the seeds through their digestive tract, uh, which will be uh, dormant until spring, as we had mentioned earlier. Okay, here's a range map showing the native range of the species covers, as you can see, a, a, a large portion of the Eastern US and even into the Midwestern states. And here's a map showing the hardiness zones of uh, uh, 4B through 9B, pretty much covers most of the US. The black gum fall color is, is spectacular. As we've mentioned earlier, it rivals red maple in that regard. It's one of the first trees to start turning in the fall. You can uh, you can see these these leaves turning before most other species. Looking back at uh, uh, Frank Pellet's American Honey Plants book from 1920, there's some really interesting uh, comments in here regarding the Nyssa species or uh, genus. Excuse me, uh, Nyssa aquatica is. Uh, is a species that is a, a farther down south, pretty much uh, in in and around swamps. In in his in his comments regarding aquatica species, he said A.B. Marchant averaged 82 pounds of surplus honey per colony from Tupelo for a 17 year period on the Apalachicola River in Florida. During part of this time, he kept as many as 500 colonies to the yard. In 1904, he took 250 30 gallon barrels from 750 colonies. 
an average of about 120 pounds of honey per colony. Pretty, pretty amazing. And, and if you look on down there, it, it talks about how Tupelo honey is, is of good quality and when unmixed will not granulate. And bottlers back in the day like to blend the Tupelo honey with other grades to uh, which would uh, prevent help prevent uh, granulation. Very interesting. Oh, and you can, uh, as, as we mentioned in most of these uh, videos, uh, be sure and check out Strathcona Beekeepers Library. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video, and you can download PDF versions of a lot of uh, uh, beekeeping books that are now in public domain, and this is one of them, one of the classics. Historically, the uh, gum trees were used as beehives. It was uh, very handy uh, to just bring home a section of the of the log, and uh, and then you you had your hive of bees in there. And uh, here's a picture of a typical setup back in the day. You can look at a, a cutaway of one of these here, and uh, how beautiful the the comb is inside the log that the that the bees are making good use of. These setups were, were very practical, inexpensive, and uh, in true pioneer form, uh, uh, beekeepers figured out a way to get by on the land and, uh, and used, used the available resources that they had at their hand. You couldn't just uh, order up anything from Man Lake back in the day. I really like this picture. Shows this lady here close to uh, to one of the the uh, bee gum hives, and the first thing I thought about is she's going to get a bee in her bonnet. I can just see a bee flying up in there and then and then having a hard time getting getting back out. Uh, but uh, obviously, obviously the colonies were gentle. Here, here was here was a picture I really liked. It uh, looks like maybe a triple deep. Uh, log hive. If you look real close, you can see it's in three sections, at least the one on the left there. Black gum is an amazing tree. Not only provides homes for the bees, provides lots of great nectar and pollen. And so I just wanted to uh, take that few extra minutes and, and show you a few pictures of the black gum tree. And so, uh, so get out and find you some folks. Uh, I'm sure you've got them all around. They're, they're pretty common uh, in most of the country. And if, if you live in a part of the country where, where you don't have any growing the natural, uh, maybe you'd be fortunate enough to be able to, to grow some. So anyway, uh, I really appreciate y'all watching my videos. If you, if you like my content, please subscribe and uh, comment and, and share and give me a thumbs up if you would. Thank you so much again. God bless you. And we'll uh, see you next time. Oh, uh, probably have basswood coming up real soon. Uh, not a real common tree at this particular uh, location. But uh, I'm going to be able to, uh, to get some footage of, uh, of some here really soon. So y'all stay tuned. And we'll catch you next time.